In the world of heavy equipment, some names are etched into steel. Benjamin Holt, Robert Letourneau, Daniel Best. These pioneers built empires that shaped the construction industry. But there was another kind of innovator, one who worked not in a corporate laboratory but in the back shop of a California dealership. A man who looked at Caterpillar's biggest machines and thought, what if we put two of them together? His name was Robert A. Peterson. Everyone called him Buster. Over a career spanning three decades, he sold 34 patents to Caterpillar and designed machines so radical that none of the originals survive today. This is the story of a backyard genius who became one of the most influential equipment designers of the 20th century. The machinery tale begins in 1936, when Howard Peterson incorporated a small tractor dealership in the San Francisco Bay Area. He purchased the existing Caterpillar territory from Robinson Tractor Company for $150,000, acquiring rights to sell cat equipment across five counties, Marin, San Francisco, San Mateo, Alameda, and Contra Costa. Six years later, in 1942, Howard's brother Buster joined the family business. America had just entered World War II, and Caterpillar equipment was shipping overseas by the thousands. The domestic market faced unprecedented demand from contractors working on defense projects. Buster arrived with a gift that would prove invaluable. He could look at an unsolvable problem and imagine a mechanical solution nobody else had considered. While other dealers simply sold what Caterpillar manufactured, Buster began modifying, combining, and reimagining those yellow machines into something entirely new. In 1948, American contractors faced a fundamental limitation. Caterpillar's largest dozer was the D-8, a capable machine but insufficient for the massive earth-moving projects emerging across the country. Dams, highways, mining operations, all demanded more power than any single tractor could provide. The D-9 was still years away. Buster Peterson's solution was characteristically bold. He first built a proof of concept using two Alice Chalmers HD-19 crawlers, removing the inside track and final drive from each tractor, then bolting them together side by side using custom fabricated plates. When this prototype performed well, he applied the same principles to Caterpillar D-8s. A control system featuring two throttles, two gear shift levers, two steering clutch levers, and one master clutch lever allowed a single operator to command both engines and drivetrains. The first production twin D8 produced 269 drawbar horsepower, twice the working power of a standard machine. It carried a 15-ton ripper on the rear. Some configurations featured blades stretching 16 to 21 feet wide. In 1950, a twin D8 shipped to Morrison Knudsen's Farmington Dam project near Stockton, California. That same year, another went to Hungry Horse Dam in Montana, assembled by the local cat dealer using Peterson's blueprints and conversion components. It proved essential for clearing over 20,000 acres of timber from the reservoir site. A third machine pushed coal at the Tanner's Creek power plant in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. The most specialized twin D8s addressed Texas land clearing challenges. The King Ranch, one of the largest ranches in the United States, battled mesquite trees invading their grazing land. Tough, thorny trees growing 40 feet high with root systems penetrating deep into the soil. In March 1951, Peterson delivered a high clearance twin set to cat dealer WMK Holt Company of San Antonio for King Ranch operations. This wasn't simply two tractors bolted together, it was a purpose-built land-clearing monster. The machine weighed 52 tons and rode on elevated tracks, providing 36 inches of ground clearance. The front featured a knockdown bar capable of toppling mesquite trees 40 feet high and 20 inches in diameter. A Holt root plow cut 16 feet wide and 16 inches deep, severing roots to prevent regrowth. Buster added a seed blower to the rear. In a single pass, this machine could knock down trees, rip out roots, and plant new grass seed. The price? Around $55,000. King Ranch ordered a second high clearance unit, delivered in early 1952. In 1954, Caterpillar introduced the D9 with 286 horsepower, making the twin D8 economically obsolete almost overnight. 
Buster obtained a patent for his design that same year. But the moment for Siamese dozers had passed. As far as anyone knows, none of the original twin D8s survived. Yet obsolescence didn't slow Buster Peterson. If anything, it pushed him toward even more ambitious designs. By the early 1960s, wheel tractor scrapers were replacing crawler-drawn implements on many projects. These machines needed push tractors for loading, and the biggest scrapers required more pushing power than any single dozer could provide. In 1965, Buster unveiled the Quad D9. Rather than joining tractors side by side, he connected two D9G units end to end using a yoke and ball joint arrangement. A down pressure hydraulic cylinder on the front of the rear tractor could increase traction from one machine to the other or float the rear unit to smooth the ride. Air controls allowed a single operator to run both machines in tandem through a special steering mechanism. The result, 770 combined horsepower under one command. Three separate patents covered this innovation. The first one was filed in April 1958 and granted in June 1961 and covered tandem push loading, the cushion push dozer blade and inside track frame push arms. The other two addressed control arrangements and draft assemblies. The filing dates proved crucial. Some claimed Norman Hamm of Rockwell Manufacturing invented the cushion dozer first, but Peterson's patent preceded Hamm's by three years. More importantly, Buster used an inside push arm mounting design while Ham used standard outside track frame mounts. Peterson's configuration remains the standard used by 99% of scraper contractors today. By the mid-1960s, Caterpillar could no longer ignore demand for Quad D9s. Between 1965 and 1967, they converted approximately 35 sets at the factory retaining the 66A serial number prefix. In January 1968, Caterpillar purchased the patents from Buster Peterson and began production in earnest. They renamed the machine DD9G DD, standing for dual D9, with new serial number prefixes. Between 1968 and 1974, they built 51 DD9Gs, seven DD9Hs followed between 1974 and 1980, until the 460 horsepower D9L finally offered enough single tractor power for most applications. The late 1960s saw one of the most impressive deployments of these machines. At Anaconda Copper's Twin Buttes Mine near Green Valley, Arizona, contractors amassed no fewer than 13 Quad D9s to push load 52 cat scrapers during overburden removal. They stripped 266 million tons of material in just four years. Buster also designed the side-by-side -side D9, connecting two tractors laterally rather than in tandem. The side-by-side -side unit pushed a 24-foot wide U-dozer blade for mine stripping and reclamation. Caterpillar produced 11 side-by-side -side D9G sets and 13 D9H sets before discontinuing the configuration in 1977. The Quad D9s represented only part of Buster's creative output. For the San Luis Canal project, contractor Peter Kiewit needed massive earth-moving capacity. Buster designed 666 scraper configurations, connecting three of Caterpillar's largest wheel tractor scrapers together. These mechanical trains stretched roughly 186 feet long, crawling across the California landscape. When Guy F. Atkinson Company struggled to compact Rocky Fill at Briones Dam near Oakland in 1960, conventional equipment couldn't achieve specifications. The embankment required approximately 10 million cubic yards of material containing significant rock content. Buster created the Dual 631 compactor, nicknamed Stomper. Two 631A prime movers joined end-to-end -end with padfoot wheels replacing tires. Speed and considerable weight overwhelmed the obstinate material. The dam was completed in 1963. He later built the 70-ton Twin 6 31B Tamper with a redesigned yoke and Hista C400B wheels. For Bechtel Corporation's 1949 Super Inch Pipeline project, Buster modified Cat D8 tractors by moving tracks outward 53 inches and adding 20-foot booms with 10,000 pounds of hydraulic counterweight.
These offset side boom designs dramatically increased lifting capacity for large diameter pipe. Over his career at Peterson Tractor Company, Buster sold 34 patents to Caterpillar, an extraordinary achievement for someone working outside the manufacturer's engineering department. Each patent required identifying a problem, conceiving a solution, building a prototype, proving the concept in actual field conditions, and documenting everything thoroughly. The relationship exemplified how dealer-manufacturer partnerships could drive innovation. Peterson's shop served as an unofficial research laboratory, testing ideas too radical for Caterpillar's conservative engineering culture. As decades passed, original twin and quad sets gradually disappeared, scrapped, parted out, worn beyond repair. In 2012, vintage Caterpillar collector Ed Aiken approached fellow enthusiast Glenn Gelotti with a twin D8 coupling he had specially fabricated. He had been fascinated by the double dozer since high school. Together with Peterson Cat President Dwayne Doyle Sr., they developed a plan to recreate the machine using Buster's original drawings. Akin supplied vintage tractors from his collection. Gilotti rebuilt engines and arranged transportation. Peterson Cat rebuilt frame and track assemblies, merging tractors in the same bay where originals had been built decades earlier. Five D8 tractors were cannibalized for the recreation, combining components from two U and 13A series machines. The project coincided with Peterson Cat's 80th anniversary in 2016. Our goal was to recreate something unique to Peterson, Doyle explained. There was certainly no financial justification, but they're a link to our past and something we are very proud of. The Retro Twin D8 carried a 16-foot, 4-inch blade and became a crowd favourite at antique tractor shows. After years on static display in Hillsborough, Oregon, Peterson technicians restored it to running condition for Caterpillar's 100th anniversary in 2025. Today, Peterson Cat operates as one of the largest Caterpillar dealerships in North America, serving over 100,000 square miles across Northern California, Oregon, and Southwest Washington. Fourth generation leadership signed on to Caterpillar's sales and service agreement in 2020. But Buster Peterson's influence extends far beyond any single dealership. His inside pusharm design remains the industry standard. His patents shaped how Caterpillar designed its most specialized equipment. His willingness to combine machines in ways never intended by their manufacturer opened possibilities contractors still exploit today. Robert A. Buster Peterson never ran a major corporation or led a research facility. What he had was a shop, a supply of Caterpillar equipment, and an imagination that refused to accept limitations. When contractors needed more power, he gave them the Twin D8. When they needed to push bigger scrapers, he created the Quad D9. When they needed to compact difficult material, he built the Stomper. 34 patents three decades of innovation. A legacy written not in the dirt, moved, the dams built and the land cleared by machines that existed only because one man saw possibilities others missed. The earth-moving industry celebrates its giant manufacturers. But sometimes the most important advances come from the edge, from dealers and operators who understand problems in ways factory engineers never can. Buster Peterson understood those problems. And one machine at a time, he solved them.